Not being aggressive enough in games might be the biggest challenge that young basketball players face. I played Division I college basketball and now play professionally, and yet being aggressive did not come naturally to me when I was a younger player. In fact, when I look back at my high school games, I start to get frustrated when I realize how passive of a player I really was. So in this video, I'm going to look back at the player I was in high school and compare it to the player I am now to see what I could have done differently to be more aggressive on offense. And if you like these kind of film breakdown videos, please leave a like so I know to keep making them. First, let's take a look at how I played on my public high school team, where I was clearly the best player, although we did have a solid overall team. I'm not going to sit here and say I wasn't aggressive at all on my high school team, because that would be a lie. I think my senior year I averaged 17 or 18 points a game, I mean I could definitely score. However, these are the kinds of possessions I would often have, where I would catch in decent scoring situations, but I would just move it to the next player. And when I really dissect my film, I now notice so many situations where I could have been more assertive on offense, especially with my shot which was probably my best skill. Notice how when I come off this ball screen, I don't even look for my three-point shot. Now compare that to the way I play on my professional team in Finland. If I get any space on a screen, it's an automatic shot. If you are a good shooter, it is essential that you are aggressive with your shot. Even when you miss, this will open up so many other aspects of your game. And in transition was another situation in high school I hardly even looked for my shot. Now I realize transition threes can be incredibly effective. Let's talk a little bit more about transition. On my pro team, when I get a rebound I'm constantly looking to push. Getting out quickly especially off the rebound is one of the best ways to put pressure on the defense so I love to play fast. Now compare that to my high school days when I wasn't really as comfortable pushing in transition or looking for these little scoring windows. Maybe that has a little bit to do with the fact that there was no shot clock when I was in high school which means there was no reason to rush. By the way I find it absolutely absurd that there isn't a shot clock at every single level of basketball in the states. Anyway, pushing in transition at the lower levels is even more important because the defense is so much worse. Very few high school teams are actually good at transition defense, so you have to take advantage of these opportunities. So I failed to look for my shot consistently, and I wasn't very good at pushing it in transition. Where else could I have gotten more points and been more aggressive? Well, one of them takes a bit more skill, but I wanna point it out to you anyways. I think I could have turned my drives into post-ups more often. Let me show you what I mean. Here I get cut off, but instead of just moving it right away, I turn the drive into a small post-up and I'm still able to find a scoring opportunity. However, when I was a younger player, if I got cut off, I almost always just picked up my dribble and moved it. For all guards, even if you aren't super tall, I think turning your drives into post-ups can be effective because even if you don't score, good things can still happen. It's funny because when I was in high school, if a play was ran for me, I was almost always aggressive and comfortable taking that shot. I think I felt like those were my opportunities to shoot without anyone thinking I was a ball hog or something, which is absolutely absurd. But then if the play was for someone else, I seemed to get robotic and never thought to break off a play even if the opportunity was right in front of me. Basketball is a game of nuance. If you have the opportunity to score, take advantage of it. I will say I was always really good at attacking on the baseline in high school. I especially like driving left baseline and finishing with my inside hand. However, Notice how I didn't really know how to be physical on my drives, which led to a lot of misses. I still attack baseline all the time as a pro, but now I understand how to use my size so much better that I can turn this type of play into an and one instead of a miss. Interestingly, I was a little less comfortable with those underhand finishes when I was in high school. I think this drive would have made more sense as an inside hand extension towards the rim, like you see me doing here on my pro team. Actually, the inside underhand finish is kind of my go-to, but I didn't really develop it as much until I got to college. One of my biggest areas of development that has allowed me to get so many easy buckets since I was in high school is my cutting. On this play, instead of just standing in the corner, I should have noticed my defender completely out of position and I would have had a layup. This is a very similar play with my pro team, but now I understand how to read my defender. I'm telling you, becoming a great cutter can get you four to six extra points a game by itself. Even if your teammates aren't good enough to find you, Learn how to cut now because as you start playing with higher level players, they're going to be looking for it. For young players who are a little bit more athletic, I think you should try and dunk every single time you get the opportunity to in high school. Don't worry about if you miss it sometimes, you look like a higher level, more aggressive player when you go up to dunk. Unfortunately, I no longer even have this ability like I did back in the day. So as you can see, I look like a completely different player now than I did when I was in high school. Of course, this makes sense. I mean, a lot of those clips were from about seven years ago. However, I still know I could have done more, especially against that lower level defense. And the thing that was really holding me back was my mentality. Also, I had a 
a question for you guys because this was always a predicament I couldn't figure out. If you are the best player on your team and you have the best chance of playing at the next level, do you think you should get subbed out of the game if you're blowing out your opponent to let the bench players get in? Or should you play the whole game so your stats will look better and you'll have a better chance of playing in college? I never knew the right answer to this, so I wanted to get your thoughts, but my coach always took me out if we were winning by a lot. So like I said, on my high school team, I was clearly the best player. What is interesting though is that on my AAU team, Sports U, I was always the fourth or fifth option when I was on the court. So in high school, I was in two completely different roles. One where I was the number one option and one where I had to fight for minutes. And I'm sure a lot of you find yourself in one of these two situations. Now, I had to fight for minutes mostly because I was playing with guys like Nas Reed and Javon Quinterly, but I also think it was partly because of my passive mentality. There were times where I proved I could make high level plays and yet I almost always deferred to those other guys who had high major offers. You might be able to figure out what my role was on that sports U team. And if you guessed that I was the physical enforcer, uh, you would be incorrect. I mean, look at me, of course I was the shooter. So you would think if I was the shooter, if everyone knew that was my job, then I would at least be really aggressive with my shot. And for the most part, I think I was. If I was open, I usually shot it. Although I did notice something when I was going back and watching some of these games. If I missed a shot, then I could see myself on the court getting passive on the next few possessions. It's like I was scared to take another shot because I was afraid of a miss, and in this case, it led to a turnover. This is so frustrating for me looking back on. I think because I didn't see myself as the level of player as those other guys, I felt like I needed to make my shots because that was the only reason I was on the court. So if I wasn't making shots, then I would just move the ball around and try not to make a mistake. What you start to realize as you get older is that no one is really paying attention to you. No one on my team can cared if I made my last shot or missed my last shot. Only I did. So I was really in my head for no reason. Like if you're a shooter, shoot the ball. Don't be like me and let a few of those misses deter you. It's also funny because I've never been the best athlete. This was obvious a lot in high school. And as you can see, it still can get me in trouble to this day, but I never used it as an excuse to not be able to play up to my competition. If anything, lack of size or athleticism can actually be a positive for a lot of players because it forces you to get creative with with what you do on the court. My basketball IQ has grown so much over the years in large part because of my lack of athleticism. My goal in going back to my high school days is to show you how much mentality impacts the type of player you are. Yes, I've gotten stronger and my skills have gotten better from that time period. But by far the biggest change from my 17 year old self to my 24 year old self now is my aggressiveness. Please don't let passiveness be the thing that holds you back from your potential. And if you aren't the best athlete, but you still wanna play at a high level, watch this video on how a high basketball IQ can get you paid. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you soon.